Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, or co-host, Joe Kuzma. Is that how it works, Brian? If there's two of us, are we both co-hosts, or are you kind of the co-host and I'm the host? You're the host. I'm the co-host. You're Johnny. I'm Ed. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I am Maverick and you're Goose. There you go. Ah, uh, see, I had to get that in there once again. Welcome, folks. Uh, you know what? I left off the last episode with a very tantalizing question, and it all stems, and, and I'm not the only one that's thinking this way, apparently. Um, it all stems from when the Steelers lost the AFC Championship game against the New England Patriots. What was everyone saying? Were they saying, oh, we need what? Another a wide receiver number two? You think that, Brian? Was that one of the things we needed? Another guy besides Antonio Brown to catch the football? That would have been high on my list of things we needed. Okay. Uh, check. Uh, would you have said we needed offensive linemen to uh, make sure that the quarterback doesn't get sacked? Um, nah. No, probably not. Nah. I think we're good there. How about uh, a pass rush? Oh, yeah. Need some guys to get after Tom Brady. How about guys to, to cover people like Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman? Uh, yeah, that was that was uh, probably um, something I completely um, yelled and screamed repeatedly during the game. <laughs> okay. So, um, how about a quarterback? Do they need a quarterback to beat the New England Patriots? I, 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 the answer is no, <laughs> N- no, no. We we have discussed this from so many different angles, and a lot of it was uh, in contrast to should the Steelers draft a quarterback? Why wouldn't it be a pro? Uh, a, you know, a possibility or a priority, I should say, this year. A lot of people talking about Ben retiring, et cetera, et cetera, and then of course. Landry Jones, should he come back or not? We talked about how lousy most of the quarterbacks that get drafted are. But uh, Bob Labriola posted over on the official Pittsburgh Steelers website a very good article that really sums up. uh, It was very detailed, even more detailed than what Eric Herman. Coincidentally, Eric actually published his, and he was working on it for almost two months. He he was doing it in between things. He had spreadsheets and everything else, and uh, he did not have a total column on the spreadsheet. So, so I'm told. So, uh, very. I heard that too. Yeah. I heard that too. I heard that 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 really um, threw somebody off. <laughs> I don't. You know what? That may have been a different spreadsheet. Always add total columns to your spreadsheet. So, yes, yeah, confusing uh, otherwise. Yeah, I, I I was totally lost. But he, he examined. I think over the last decade or so, not even the last decade, 2010, 2012, the mid round quarterbacks. It was basically the Dak Prescott uh, situation, the Dak Dak, Dak Prescott uh, effect. Man, that's a hard one to say there. Um, (laughs) Because, you know what, everyone's thinking, oh, there's these quarterbacks in the middle of the rounds, and you could just get the, you know, like Landry Jones. He was taken in the fourth round. Why not? You know, obviously, just get a guy in the fourth round, and they'll be the heir apparent to Ben Roethlisberger, right? Right, because, you know, look. Hey, Tom Brady, he was a sixth rounder. He was whatever rounder he was. Dak Prescott, fourth round. That means, of course, that every fourth rounder is going to be a starter. Every sixth rounder. There are diamonds in the rough in every draft at quarterback. And they're all so awesome. They're going to be Hall of Famers. And the heck with Ben. Doesn't matter whether he's coming back. Doesn't matter what he's doing. We need that guy because, you know, why not? We have nothing better to do with our fourth and fifth round pick. And to coin a term, absolutely. Uh, Not only uh, to coin a term from Pat Kerwin, and uh, he was talking on Sirius XM NFL radio about this I listen to these guys quite a bit and they're always the drive home guys so I, I'm usually those are the ones I'm hearing or on the way there Ross Tucker uh, but Pat uh, said it great he, you know what you're talking about a quarterback you're probably not uh, talking about a guy a play now draft pick you're talking about a play later draft pick so when I asked if the Steelers drafting a QB this year will help them beat the New England Patriots in the AFC championship game should that be the scenario or win a Super Bowl Let's just go the whole way. 
I don't think so. I think they have more pressing needs, especially considering the quality of quarterback you're probably going to get at pick number 30 overall in the NFL draft. Absolutely. It's and as you said, that article by Bob Labriola was was very um, informative. Uh, it's about the idea, you know, people think there's a success at one point somewhere down the road in, in, a, in a low draft pick that all quarterbacks coming from low round drafts uh, or a low round pick will be great. Now, you know, you cannot just throw darts at the board uh, and say, look, here's the quarterbacks in this draft. Any of them. They're all awesome. We'll just grab one in the fifth round or in the fourth round or in the third round. When it comes time, we have to invest a pick that is worthy of somebody who might be the franchise quarterback. But that's not going to help us next year. We have a franchise quarterback right now. We have one of the greatest franchise quarterbacks we've ever had. Probably one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. Um, And so drafting a guy who is going to play on the – Second string, maybe, or third string and hold a clipboard? How is that going to help us take the next step? It's not. No, no, none whatsoever. There are definitely – I've already mentioned the priorities or the greater needs. I I said, hey, another guy to throw the ball to besides Antonio Brown? We might have that. Uh, Steelers might. might. Uh, Darius Green gets healthy. uh, Reinstatement of Martavis Bryant still hasn't happened. Hashtag Hashtag free Martavis. Yeah, (laughs) almost jinx there, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, among other things. I mean, we don't know – the Steelers are a wide receiver factory. They develop wide receivers unlike any team I'm aware of in the NFL. Justin Hunter comes here. He might be able to make something out of his six foot four frame, too. So there's a plethora of possibilities, and the best receiving back in all of football is there with Le'Veon Bell. Hey, look, you know what? Uh, I don't even know that they need to use a pick on offense top overall. I mean, we're talking about stopping the Patriots, matching up with them toe for toe. They are a team that's going to get uh, Rob Gronkowski back. Uh, they have Brandon Cooks, which I'm not sold Brandon Cooks is going to be any better. He's going to be like Chad Ocho Cinco when everyone thought Ocho Cinco, hey, he's going to go up to New England and be the next Randy Moss. I kind of think Brandon Cooks is going to be the next Ocho Cinco flop for the Patriots, and that might backfire for them. But you know what? They're making moves. All, and the Steelers have to make moves. They have to improve and strengthen their team. They don't have a whole lot of primary needs. So I think that's where maybe some of the thought process is people are panicking. They thought maybe Ben would retire. We found out just recent news here that Ben has officially announced, and we speculated this anyways because he was showing up at the facility and watching game film, not cleaning out his locker as uh, Mark Caballi had <laughs> kind of uh, sarcastically <laughs> said. But Ben is returning for yet another season. He He's not leaving anyone hanging. So we know at least – and, geez, did we have any doubt there, Brian, really? I well, mean, no, we didn't. I mean, we've been talking about this uh, ad nauseum since Ben made his commentary that it didn't make any sense. But it makes sense for him to say those things. You know, first of all, and, and this was brought up very early on, and I don't remember by who, but, you know, Ben's married. And at some point, his wife probably would like him to retire and still be a functioning human being and spend some more time with the kids. And I'm sure that Ben wants to do that, too. But saying, I really have to take all of my, you know, everything into account before I decide what I'm doing, that really helps at home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's, a, that's, that's brownie points for the wife. Whether, <laughs> whether it was meant to be that or not, it, do, it is. Look, Ben, Ben sometimes says things that elicit conversation. But those of, you, of us who, who thought about this with uh, any depth realized, He's not going anywhere. He will almost certainly, unless something else happens in the next couple of years, play out his, the contract he's on. He may retire at that point. He may not. Depends on where he's at and how well he's playing. But there's too much money on the table. Ben is not doing uh, Brady-like or you know Antonio Brown-like even um, advertising. So he doesn't have this other uh, set of revenue streams. So it's a lot of money on the table. He's not going to go anywhere. And as, as happened today... Uh, the big news that really wasn't news at all, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was the big news of the day. And you know what? I, I got to get, I got to dig into this because we're almost sounding like we're, we're beating the dead horse so much. Yes. We've talked about this. 
I think what really illustrates this is to go through actual names. Now, Eric had gone from 2010 to present day, and we really aren't talking too much about the the players who were taken in last year's draft because they haven't had a chance to really prove or do anything otherwise, unless you're looking at a, a, a year's worth of work by, I don't know, Prescott or Carson Wentz or Jared Goff. I, I wouldn't write any of them out. I wouldn't necessarily even say that Prescott, even though he had a fantastic year, we've seen sophomore slumps too. We've seen one hit wonders. So just just go back to Nick Foles. When Nick Foles got the range reins of uh the Eagles, well, look at Nick Foles. They found a franchise quarterback in Nick Foles. Eh, a couple years later, not so much. Yeah, so Bob goes back to like 1998, and this just goes to show you, for anyone who remembers, it, you know, there may be some listeners here who aren't even aware of who the one name is. So you go to the top of that draft, picks one and two, first two overall. The Colts go and get Peyton Manning, franchise quarterback. Uh, it, it just almost mimics back a few years ago with Andrew Luck going number one overall and RG3 going number two, and RG3 is currently unemployed. But the counterpart to Peyton Manning was Ryan Leaf to the San Diego Chargers, who kind of flunked himself out of the league and you know, crashed and burned pretty quickly. And he Very was a top quickly. prospect. So you're talking about there was only one pick, uh, one guy you couldn't take in the entire draft, you go and take the other guy, Ryan Leaf, and it still didn't work out for you. It, there's no guarantees here, but uh, what Bob really illustrates is is this Dak Prescott or Tom Brady or Russell Wilson situation that is very much the exception to the rule. Uh, he has a, what is it, 128 quarterbacks taken in rounds four through seven in 19 NFL drafts uh, since that's from 98 to present day. He says there's only five of those 128 that deserve to be recognized as legitimate NFL starting quarterbacks. That's Matt Hasselbeck. That's uh, the, 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 how come I can't Bulger. remember Bulger, but I can't remember his first name. Uh, but he Mark. Played, yeah, Mark. He played for the Rams. Of course, Brady. They were sixth round picks. Kirk Cousins. I don't know if you'd feel so mm-hmm. great about Kirk Cousins being your starting quarterback. I know people in Washington are have a love hate with him. And then there's of course Dak Prescott, and uh, of course it, Labs is saying here that only of those five, only really Bulger and Brady deserve to be recognized as franchise QBs. So, and then there were a few more that got to they became starters. But I mean, you look at these names: David Garrard, Matt Castle, Kyle Orton, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Tyrod Taylor, Tom Savage, and Trevor Simeon. And his direct quote is, the majority of fans from those teams would prefer those guys weren't starting for their their favorite teams. <laughs> and I totally agree. That's where I'm coming from. So, I mean, this is just shocking. You see some of these names that are that are listed here. They're always talking about the, uh, you know, he's talking about here, do you consider Andy Dalton a franchise quarterback? We don't even consider Joe Flacco to be elite. Okay. Right. <laughs> so we got to stop this craziness with all of this. Here's some more. I, I got. I'm just rapid fire here. Uh, Charlie Batch, Matt Schaub, Kevin Cobb, Drew Stanton, Ryan Mallett, Brian Greasy, Chad Henney, Josh McCown, Nick Foles, who you mentioned, Tavares Jackson, Chris Sims, and then you have like Mike Glennon or Jacoby Brissett, Jimmy, Jimmy G, Christian Hackenberg. We don't know about those guys yet. Cody Kessler, um, well Osweiler, and then he says the busts. Quincy Carter, Kevin O'Connell, Jimmy Clausen. Jimmy Clausen, this is yeah. this is something. The Panthers take Jimmy Clausen. I think he might have been a second-round pick, actually, but he was one of the top QBs taken in that yeah. draft. A year later, they come back around and take Cam Newton because they realized Jimmy Clausen ain't going to work out. Uh, Colt McCoy, Geno Smith, Garrett Grayson, Sean Mannion, um, da, 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 Brian Brome, John B- Trent Edwards. I mean, some of the – Charlie Fry. There you go. There's another uh, Cleveland Brown. Chris Redman, Giovanni Carmese. Uh, Brody Coyle, holy cow. And then, of course, everyone's talking about how Bill Belichick does this so great. He had Matt Castle. He has uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and and uh, maybe, um, who am I thinking about? Hoyer had a stint there, too. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Mallett, oh, they always do it right. They always develop quarterbacks. Do they really? He points this out. Kevin O'Connell, and, and he puts Mallett in this group, too, which I totally agree with. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury and the one that I was talking with you off the air that blew my mind and totally forgot about. This just goes to show you not every pick is solid and even the Patriots get things wrong. Rohan Davey. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I, it, this just goes to the point. I, I, I just did the math real quick and you know my love of math uh, and, and it's kind of a love-hate relationship. But 
if you take those last set of drafts that he's talking about, you have essentially a 3% chance of drafting a decent quarterback in the lower end of the draft. Decent. I, I would argue with Labs that I don't really consider Mark Bulger a franchise quarterback, even though he played for a decent amount of years. I don't think he was all that in a bag of chips. So then you're looking at only Brady. Well, that's one out of 128 that really turned into a franchise quarterback. And so there's a buddy of mine. His name's Don Roberts. And um, he's been on the Cardale Jones bandwagon for a long time. He wants us to, to pick him up from Buffalo. He wanted us to draft him last year. This is why you don't do those things. Because the chances of somebody deep down becoming a great quarterback are slim to none. Oh, it's 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 like me trying to make uh, make it into the NBA. Uh, I realized that even in high school, even though I was six five, which was towering over a lot of uh, guys and teenagers that weren't that hadn't yet hit puberty, uh, weren't necessarily hitting the weights and whatnot. I realized, you know what? I'm kind of a center or power forward right now, but there are like point guards that are like six five. <laughs> there are guards that are six five in the NBA, and you got people like Shaq that are out there in my heyday that during my era breaking backboards and shattering yeah. glass. So, uh, yeah, it's about the same as the odds of me making it into the NBA. Maybe, maybe just slightly better. I, I, and you know what, Lambriola actually put in here too. He was talking about second day picks, rounds two and three, uh, just even just discounting the. The other rounds, uh, four through seven, and the number that you threw out overall, he said mm-hmm. it was like an 8.9% chance of turning into a quality NFL starter. And, I mean, he's counting a few names in there, uh, like Derek Carr, for example, whose story isn't completely written, but he's turned out okay so far. But he's yeah. saying if you want to spend a number one pick and only a number one pick – for a franchise quarterback, that might be the way it goes, unless, of course, you get Tim Couch, Joey Harrington, Patrick Ramsey, Kyle Bowler, Rex Grossman, J.P. Lossman, who came in the – he was picked by the Bills just a little bit after uh, Eli Manning, Philip Rogers, and our own Big Ben Roethlisberger. And then, of course, Jason Camel, who uh, mentioned Camel recently too, Matt Leiner, Brady Quinn, Josh Freeman, Brandon Whedon, E.J. Manuel, and he just keeps going on and on and on and on, and I totally agree with this. Absolutely. I mean, the bottom line is there are not 32 at any given time in in the world. There are not 32 franchise quarterbacks in existence. When you have one, it's a rarity. At no point in time will there be enough for every team to have one. And you you asked a question uh, in in a in a posting board, and and I think it's important that we bring this up to at least a little bit. I think we're taking that for granted. Yeah, absolutely taking it for granted. I, I think I think Ben's taken for granted a lot across the entire oh, wow. NFL yeah. and will and will truly miss him when his days are done. I think we kind of took Troy Polamalu for granted as well. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I, I miss I miss I miss some of those guys, but I'm going to say that the quality of that pick at number thirty is not going to be very strong either because you're probably looking at let's say two quarterbacks go, three quarterbacks go. If there are three quality quarterbacks in this draft, at and I don't all. think there are. Yeah. I don't think there are. Quite frankly, I don't think there's one. <laughs> so, um, I mean, there are guys in the draft who have measurables, right? They exist. And uh, there was a, there's a, a story about that, too, where they were talking about uh, the guy that the 49ers took, right? Yeah. Um, Gio, Car- whatever Car- his name Carmazzi is. or Carmazzi, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Gio Carmazzi. So there's a guy. He's got all the measurables. You know, guys who are illustrious. You know, Montana. You know, what Walsh and 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 Mariucci are, are like. This is our guy. And they got Mike Holmgren even in that group. He's going to be great. And he was awful. <laughs> I mean, he he was just flat out terrible. So there's no there's no guarantee no matter where. But in this draft, we don't really even have a guy that everybody can look at and say. Oh my God, he's he's really really good. We have guys that everybody that looks at them says he'll need a couple years to develop. You can't throw him in right away. If he can fix these things, maybe he'll be all right. If he can fix those issues, maybe he'll be all right. There is no quarterback in this draft that everyone says surefire. That's a guy who's going to be a franchise quarterback. There are more questions about these guys, and nonetheless, many of them will go first round for the simple fact that they are too rare. 
Yeah. Uh, and you know what? It, it just dawned on me, too. Who is, like, the top guy, the top quarterback, the top passer in this draft? I mean, in the past, you, you see Andrew Luck. Oh, bona fide, definitely number one overall. Even Cam Newton, definitely mm-hmm. number one yep. overall. Peyton Manning, surefire. Uh, that one worked out pretty well. Yeah, but, you can't complain about that one. But even, like we said, the top two, and and then you could even go through the five, but we I, I didn't. But you look at even beyond three, you had an exceptional quarterback class where Eli and Philip Rivers and Ben came out. Of. And then you have JP Lossman in that same uh, in that same class. <laughs> I mean, it's just and even so, if you get some of these uh, some of these players like a Matt Schaub, for example, I mean, uh, he was successful for a little while, but what ultimately happened there? Would you want Matt Schaub as your starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers right now? I don't think so. I don't think they would no. have had the same level of anywhere near the same level of success that they've had with Roethlisberger under center right now. So. <laughs> People forget. I mean, and I guess I understand why we're, we, you know, we start to be a little generational here, but they forget pre-Ben. They forget uh, what it was like to have Bubby Brister and Cordell, who had a great season once or twice, but, you know, and Malone and he who shall not be named. Um <laughs> You know, they forget. They forget what it was like to suffer through those years with middling to poor quarterback play. And that's always the example I'm cited with is that we don't want to go through that again. Well, you it's kind of out of, out You're of your gonna. Yeah, it's out of your control. You you don't you don't luck yourself into listen, the Indianapolis Colts have missed the postseason for the last two years. And Andrew Luck has had some injury problems. In his first three seasons, they did make it. They actually were AFC finalists as they put the banner up, and and then they took Mm -hmm. that down. It was basically, hey, we lost, but we were in it, so let's put a banner up with the AFC championship game, of course. But um, even there, you've not had consistent success, and they're they're firing coaches, and they're, they're trying to repair things there. But even then, they had to have, what was it? A two-win season without Peyton Manning, your franchise guy, was out for the year in order to put yourself in a position to have that number one overall pick and get Andrew Luck. Uh, The Aaron Rodgers thing, I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen very often. And We've talked about how it can create turmoil and how they had to shove Brett Favre out of there. And and this is the best part that I – I wrote about this in the article of the same namesake about would drafting a quarterback help the Steelers – that year that the Packers decided to move on from Brett Favre, they had lost in the NFC Championship game in overtime to a field goal to the New York Giants. They get rid of Brett Favre, and they decide to roll with Aaron Rodgers, and they have a losing season. I can't remember what it was, maybe a five- or six-win year with Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers' first season as a starting quarterback. It took him two or three years before he got that job. And guess what's going on now? Brett Favre goes to the Jets. The Jets were eh, okay. He comes over and now plays for your division rival with the Minnesota Vikings and nearly takes them to the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, two years later, this guy's still playing. Do you really want to see Ben Roethlisberger in those ugly orange and black stripes leading the Bengals further in the playoffs? because you decided, hey, you know what? You did not know that Aaron Rodgers was going to be Aaron Rodgers at that point. There had to be rioting in Town. I know for a certain, I could tell you, the Yinzers would be burning everything down to the ground if you sent Big Ben packing and he went and played for like the Browns, Ravens, or Bengals, got them deeper into postseason, and you're sitting at home watching because you have uh, Phenom number two, supposedly, that, that had a sucky season and you only won five games. I yeah, think they I, would be going crazy. Absolutely. Think about it like this. We, we, you're talking about the Favre, Brett Favre, and uh, Aaron Rodgers situation. The only other time I can even remember this sort of working – was Montana and Young. And, you know, again, that's a special set of, set of circumstances because Young was playing in, what, the USFL for a while? Oh, yes. And, yes. and came in as in, in, a totally different way other than the draft. But you're dead on. Uh, Rodgers was 6-10 and 10 the first year. His first year, 2008, was his first full year as a starter, and he was 6-10. and 10. So even then, even then, 
you're going to go, they had to go through some pains with a guy who ends up being who most people might believe is actually the best quarterback in the league right now. Um, and, you know, whether you think it's Brady or him, doesn't matter. It's just even that guy had to start off someplace, right? And, and the rest of the team had to kind of get built around him and he had to get used to the role. Uh, and you bring up that push the guy out. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Ben Roethlisberger in a Ravens helmet or a Browns helmet? in the last few years of his career coming back and taking those teams into the playoffs by beating us. Yeah. It, unacceptable. <laughs> just, yeah. That we, we need to understand that it's not just, we don't want to go through that again. It's, it's, it's learn some acceptance. We're going to go through that again. <laughs> it, it, it isn't really optional. It'll be a miracle. If somehow we found a quarterback at the right time, who is actually going to be that you know next franchise quarterback. You can't make that kind of assumption. You can't even really hope for it. All you have to do is say, when Ben is done, let's enjoy these next three years, two years, however much longer he has. Um, enjoy that time. And when he's done, accept that it's going to be hard for a few years. Yeah, and you know what? Even talking about just some of these most recent drafts and some of the people that are in the middle of the rounds, I mean, with the exception, 2012 was okay. I mean, you had like Kirk Cousins, you had like Russell Wilson. Uh, 2011 was maybe Tyrod Taylor, TJ Yates. Uh, what was it? 2010, uh, Colt McCoy, the best guy who came out of that group, maybe, mm. and John Skelton and Joe Webb, who doesn't he returns kicks or punts for the Vikings here or there. Right. Uh, 2013 is one of the better years, believe it or not, with Landry Jones and Mike Glennon. Someone's going to shoot me for saying that. <laughs> and, then, and then you you still have AJ McCarron, who's barely played Tom Savage and, and Zach Mettenberger. Uh, none of those guys really have done anything. And in fact, uh, Eric had noted too, he said the highest drafted player in the cl- in this class being from uh, third round on, or maybe fourth round on, uh, he doesn't even play quarterback anymore. They converted Logan Thomas to a tight end. And yeah. then, I mean, the jury's out for the guys who, who were in uh, 2015 or so and, and beyond. It's just, um, it's unfathomable. I mean, it, it is it really that bad if you had to deal with Kent Graham or Jim Miller or Cordell Stewart? Uh, they, the Steelers were still competitive at those points. I mean, you look at Denver Broncos may have missed the playoffs with Trevor Simeon, but I think they're still in the mix and always they're still contending, uh, even when they've had their years with Jay Cutler and, and uh, Kyle Orton or something like that. So looking at a class franchise, I think you could kind of ride the wave a little bit as long as the foundation is solid. There are other teams where that foundation has never been solid. Uh, speaking of like the Cleveland Browns or even the Jets yeah. have been just dumpster fires more recently. I think just to get right back on that topic i think we need to agree that there are greater needs than taking a quarterback and we are going to shut the door on this conversation hopefully for the rest of unless we talk about the guys that are actually in the draft i don't even want to talk about them really because i just don't i don't hands off i don't want them so i'm with you 100 percent as as i've said repeatedly i don't want to talk about quarterbacks anymore we don't need a quarterback let's talk about what we actually do need Amen, Brian. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. (laughs) Preach it, brother. Well, you know what, folks? Until next time, I want to cut right to the end here. But, hey, uh, I don't know that we still need any more wide receivers or any threats, but throw one of them on there or some defensive players. That's truly what we'll need. And hopefully there's no guarantee that those guys are a play now, uh, win now, and and right now fix for the Steelers roster woes or position troubles or anything like that. But you know what? They tend to get better as time goes on. You look at somebody like Bud Dupree and Ryan Shazier, that's where I want to make my investment. I don't want to put my eggs into the backup quarterback basket yet. So I think a later pick I think we're okay with. Just, hey, don't expect anything more than Landry Jones. I'm with you. And I, I we need edge. We need corner help. And there are other things that we can do if the if the right picks are there. If we invest in a quarterback before the fifth round, we're wasting picks. And I, I, I've i known to have, said, to have said everything beyond the fourth round is a crapshoot anyway. It is. You're throwing darts at the board. Just look at somebody like Doran Grant, for example. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Until next time, folks, uh, me and Brian are signing off. Be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 